morning. We're heading out sword fishing. We got Niles and his gang today. Kevin's here for some underwater photos. Mike's here. And hopefully, we're gonna go find a swordfish. So, if you guys are along for the ride. Enjoy. Yeah, man. What? Fishing, hopefully, on some mahis to break the ice and get some fresh bait either way. It ain't big, but yeah, they're right behind the motors there. Yours on the yours large might be this. Yeah, there's there's five or six. There's some a few keep. There's a couple of keepers that my here. That one there. That one there might be a keeper. Borderline. Turn the handle right. He's on there. Yep. He's just swimming with us. Maybe measure the bigger ones, see if any of them keep. They're probably keep, right? I don't know if there's other ones that are gonna make it or not. There might be one or two other keepers, but go ahead and wind on them. Yeah, he's on there. There you go. And I don't know if he's a keeper, but he's bigger than the other ones next to him. We'll see. Maybe there'll be some bigger ones offshore. Couple, couple keeper my he's out of the school there. A lot of small ones mixed in. But it's almost out there the sword list. Yeah. Don't need to overstep the boundaries and all that stuff. Yeah. 27 years. Oh, wow. I was worried that north wind this morning. I wasn't really expecting to see the flag blowing out of the north, but. First time sword fishing in a while. If we get a shot. Mike's been out here lately, though. First time for me in a while. Beautiful day. Mike's trying to get the seaweed off the line there. Big old clump of weed got on there. We're trying to shake it free. I have met him a couple times. He came with us one day for fun. But yeah. yeah we gotta build the drama. Yeah. Oh yeah. We gotta do a music change. They were giving us a hard time about Backstreet Boys. Alright, good luck. Let us know. Alright, you too. Captain Greg's out there on cloud nine, waiting for a bite as well. First drift. A lot of waiting in sword fishing. You can wait hours, you can wait days. I hope we'll get a shot. Captain Greg just hooked up Cloud Nine, just east of us. A little bit deeper than we're sitting, so we're sliding out there. Hopefully our turn's coming next. This seem decent size or seem like a small one. Seemed like a small one. He stopped the reel once and he was gone. Alright. Good luck, get the next one. No bites for us yet. Time to check the baits. Make sure we're not tangled, make sure there's no squid on there, fouled up. Sometimes the buoy rod gets a bite, you don't know it. You, know, you, don't, see, you don't see the rod tip, but we didn't see nothing on this one, so I think this one will be all right. Untouched, Mike. You guys need a sinker, check out Ivan Sinker on Instagram. Best price around, Ivan Sinkers. I've been using swordfish and deep drop and mutton snapper fish and all that stuff. Unscathed. Try number two. Oh, yeah. Hopefully this is the drop. This is our medium action swordfish rod. Use it pretty much every trip down here in the Florida Keys. Just a little over seven foot long with a butt on it. Fish a 10 pound sinker most of the time, but can do a 12 on it if you want to. Can do an eight on it too, but recommended for 10 pounds. Florida Keys special. There we go. Big old water spout out there. Might get Uncle Greg. Big one, turn it up. Yesterday there was even a bigger one out here that people saw. Mike, we saw from the road, they were out here on the boat and seen it. I hit it uh, the first couple times, like very subtle, like barely noticed it, but that time I moved up and hit it again. So we'll see what happens here. See if he eats it. There's one down there. Seems small, but you never know. All right, Niles, who's up? He's on there for the time being. We're gonna be a little rundown on this reel here. 
There's no tell, I mean, if it's a bigger, small one, he's just heavy, kind of digging, but okay. if you want, just think about it, like if you want him to come towards you, you know, just roll it towards you. If the real, like, draws me amps, will shut up, like, beep, just roll it off, then back on. Okay. If he starts swimming up fast, then we'll go faster on it. We'll start speeding up, and you'll see the rod tip. If the rod tip goes straight, you know, and he's coming up, then he'll go faster, but otherwise, just like this, he's kind of coming steady, he's kind of stalling it out. Hopefully, it's so, you know, good, there's no talon, but kind of stalling this out now. Hopefully, we'll just kind of get him coming steady with us and swim up, swim sure. with that sinker. And we're not trying to rip him up, you know, like, we just want him to come up. As, if he'll come up easy, we'll try to get him up easy. Piled on the buoy. You think he was on there? I think he just ate it now. Uh, he ate it now. I know, he piled on the buoy. The buoy's sucking under. If you guys look at it, you can see it dobbing down there. Hopefully, it's so good. It was kind of a pile on bite, but you never know. Could be us. Could make our day. Yeah, because it was coming in smooth, and then it just freaking up. Underwater, yeah. We'll see if he stays on there. A lot of times, the pile on bites don't really get, but. No, we'll see. The other one, you know, he was bringing it in. It just piled on. It's like the buoy under, but. Hopefully it's so good. Hopefully. I don't hard to say if he's still on there or not, but Slack, he's swimming up with it in the back, guys. You've never seen a swordfish, right? Yep. First time sword fishing? Yep. Alright, Niles and the rest of the guys have seen him with us. I don't know if Josh has, but uh we've caught some together over the last I think eight years we fished, so hopefully we'll get up back on the board this time. Hard to very hard to catch two of them at the same time. You know, because they swim around the boat and hard to do, but. A little luck we'll get one of them, a lot of luck we'll get both of them. We're getting the tag ready in case, you know, once I'm a juvenile, we're gonna let it go. Love to try to tag and release them for the Billfish Foundation. Help off the stock assessments and all that, and growth. See where they wind up going if they get caught again. Fish in the back there, he's swimming the sinker up faster, which is a good sign, you know, because a lot of times a small fish can't swim it up, so hopefully be a keeper in the back. Hopefully it's so good. And there's no telling this one, he doesn't seem like a big one up front, but you never know, it might be a keeper too. And a little bit of luck, we'll get one of them. A lot of luck, we'll get both of them. No luck, we'll get zero. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, so they have like a strong jaw bone feed around there, but there's so much soft tissue like around like the top of it, the side of the hooks slide around these. And a lot of them get foul hooked too. So that's really sloppy feeders. So that big bill that hit the bait, the hooks will snag them. So there, you know, get that one out too, just in case. I think, you see your line's really jerky. They're wrapped up, so we could break the line on them. Move the gaff out of the way, Lars. Yeah, we'll come up, even to come to this one maybe. I don't know if it'll reach or not, but yeah, they're rubbing on each other for sure. They got crossed up. You want to detach it maybe or no? No, not really. Okay, well, they're, yeah, he's going to put that rod next to that one and we'll just have to try to figure out which way they are. We got a tangle. This one here underneath, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, no, no, you're good. Yeah, there. we'll move this one. I think it's going to be heavy, yeah. Two hands on it. And just go up to the next holder up there, wherever it's at. And hopefully we don't bust him off. Everybody wants to hook two until you get tangled up. Should I pull this one out and just put tip to tip? Yeah. Oh, you can almost see it. So I want to put them both up there. Help me grab this thing. Help me grab it and walk it up here. So let's put them both up there next to each other. And... Let's see. They're wrapped up. That was a story. good idea when you hooked two. It's tough, but <laughs> now they're tangled up. We'll see what happens. Something. Just changed drastically. Yeah, you can turn that one back on in the front there again. I think it's untangled. I don't know if the fish is still on there. Something felt like it gave. So that one might have came off, it looks like. But hopefully one will stay on there. At least we didn't break the line. Right, you might see a swordfish swim underneath the boat, you guys. Failure. First time this ever happened. The braid got around that main line and cut through it. So yeah, I broke through the 200 pound leader. Never seen that before, but he got wrapped up and cut it off. Decent fish, too. Yep. Nice spread on him. Ah, oh, it's a big one. That's a freaking 200 plus pounder. Wow. Well, you wanna. Why is he just hanging out there? That's what they do when they come off. They swim to the surface a lot of times. Fish broke off. He's swimming on top there. Love it. He'll get the weight off, then you'll speed it back up. And the lights, the lights slide down the leader, you know? So you, you don't stop for them. Like there's rubber band, you'll pull the leader a little bit, and that'll pop the rubber band. So when the leaders get close, you know, you'll just kind of tug it a little bit. And keep, going. keep going, don't stop, yep. Yeah. Put it back up. No, no, you're okay. I like that. Yep. Because that'll help break the rubber band. And don't don't yank on him or nothing like this. Just be smooth, okay? There he is down there, shining swordfish. Yep. He's not big. It looks like he might be foul hooked, but it might be a keeper. He's not big. And I'll break it. Yeah, you got perfect. Yeah, he's definitely not big, but he might be a small keeper. Well, the big one got away, but we got a little one. Go ahead and hold it right there. Go ahead and turn it off. We got one. We didn't get skunked. Yep. Um, yeah, the tag in the little guy there, and 
Yeah. Big one got away. We got the Still small one. Feel bad that his was smaller than mine. So I'm like, Good All thinking. Right, I'll cut the line. Let that one Hang go. on, save that. I messed up. We got the hook out of that little guy. I got a release on him. He's going back down there, hoping to grow up, and hopefully we'll catch him again one day when he's big. Getting re-rigged here. Little cluster there. Hope to double header. Fun to hook, tough to catch. And I don't really think I've ever tangled you and Adam break off like that, but it just happened. First time for everything. Other fish was a nice one, but we're going back down there to see what happens. We still got time. We got one. Any day you got one's a good day. We need a keeper though. Drop number three, a heartbreaker losing that big one. You can see him out there, you know, swimming with his dorsal fin and tail on top. It's a good fish, the one we wanted, but a little bit of luck. We'll get another shot and get a keeper. We got one, we tag a release one, we're still a good day. Any day, any day you get one's a good day, no matter where you're at in the world. Down we go, get another tag ready. This tag, there's a number on there, someone catches that fish. They report it to the Billfish Foundation. They can say oh, that fish was caught off Alamorada, you know, May, late May, and give them the estimated size and see how big it got, where it went. Once while they get hooked good, but a lot of times they don't get hooked good because they, they just, you know, hit it with their bill. It's like, I'll just stop it maybe, you know, three or four times on the way up and just let it sit five seconds or so. And a lot of he's there, you know, you see that like a little thump on that rod tip, so. I've had them hit it, you know, two or three hundred feet below the boat, but usually that first few hundred feet is when they, if they're gonna bite it, they bite it, you know. No bites on drift number three. We're gonna bring them both up and reset. And so we can't get them on drift number four. Bombs away. Yeah, no, get tight, son. Please eat it. Oh, yeah, I hope he eats it. No, this one here, just the tip one. Mm -mm. Kind of grabbed it and thumped pretty good, so. Whether or not he eats it's a different story, but hopefully he will. Him right there. That was him. That was him. Might be a 30 pounder, might be a 300 pounder, ain't no telling. Yep. Yeah, so buoy's getting light, you guys. The buoy's starting to sit higher. One might have it. He might be swimming up with it, so. Got a little bit lighter. This one keeps hitting, but he won't eat it. It's indicative of a swordfish. The buoy's definitely getting light. It's up higher than it was, that's for sure. Nope. Yep, crazy. Yep. Keep it out there for a minute. Hang on. There's one on the buoy. The buoy got light, he's swimming around it. This one just, he hit it 10 times. See the tip bounce, just hasn't ate it, but just trying to move it around, get him on there. See if he sticks. Might be a small one, you never know though. I've been fooled before. Might be him right there, there he is. We're tight. Loading up. Two double header bites, two shots of doubles. Oh. Yeah. I would just bring that dolphin rod. Is the dolphin rod in or no? I just don't want to run it over. We don't want to tangle up again like we did last time, but we may leave the one fish out there and try to focus on this one to start. But I don't think this is a big fish by any means, so. I mean, maybe it's a keeper, but. It did take a little line down deep. I just don't know if he was fouled or something, but he, I did back it up and he ran about 50 to 100 feet of line. No telling when you get a swordfish bite. Could be 30 pounds, could be two, 300 pounds. Yeah, we fished a long time, hard to catch a double header. We get two shots today though now. We'll see, you gotta be careful around the boat there. Yeah. Kevin likes to dive in with them and shoot some killer photos there. I got some videos over the years and we always like to have, make sure they're worn out or tired. You got them, you know, under control. Yeah. You don't want to swim with a lively one, they could kill you. Yeah, and this, we'll take it nice and easy if this one comes up first, you know, like. He's a keeper, I think. Small keeper, yeah. There you go. Yeah, Mike, we got tight. The old swordfish, got a keeper. One for dinner. Yep. Streaks alive now. I smoked that bait. Who rigged that? I don't know. We're eating some grapes now. We ate the banana, get rid of the bad luck. Hooked another double header here. We got one in the boat now. You know, keeper, not a big fish, 49 inches, but fresh swordfish can't beat it. Why would you go to the market and buy a commercial caught fish same size when you catch a fresh one yourself? So we're gonna eat that one. We got one out here with Lars up here and see what happens with it. I got a few more grapes to eat. And there's no telling, this might be a nice fish. So I think it's foul hook, but hopefully it stays on there. I mean, it's been really good, so. Can't see him yet, no telling how big he is. Yeah, but you should see color any second. Lights are coming up, you're gonna see this fish soon. 
Not a monster, but he's foul hooked on the top of the head. Looks like another keeper, though, maybe. Back off. No, you're okay. Just keep coming. Let's see what we do. That's good right there. Caught it right there. Hooked right in the dorsal. Oh, wow. Pull him on in the boat here and we'll measure him and see where he tapes out at. I think he's going to be a small keeper. He's fish was foul hooked in the dorsal fin. He kind of drowned coming up here. Floating. Oh, is he really? Yeah, he's, he's not, not moving. I'm, I'm trying to get his head to go down. If he ain't going to work, oh, he's, he's kind of lifeless. Usually we would have let him go because we would have got a keeper there, but. Keeper, 49? 49, almost 48 and a half. Okay. If he was live, we'd let him go, you guys, but Baby he's uh, laying out there floating belly up. You know, we're trying to get him going for Kevin to shoot pictures, and he ain't going, so we're going to take him. Drifting on this drift about an hour. No sword bites yet, but Mike just saw a mahi kind of jumping out there. Hopefully, he'll come in and find our batty who. Nobody's yet, though. Up, up here, he's got it now. He's eating it now. Open the bill. Start cranking, lots of cranking. There you go, good job. Hank, wine fast. There you go, mahi on. Yeah, we're kind of use the rod like a cane pole. Just fling him in? Yeah. Oh, taking line. Up. Tip down low. Couple of mahis on. We got underneath the boat on her, but we'll get him out hopefully. There's one more straight back, Lars. But you really want to break that beak off the ballyhoo next time. There you go, a couple of mahis, there you go. Throw them in the well so you don't get blood everywhere, guys. There you go, a couple more mahis, we'll take it, there you go. Lars is tight in the back, there you go. Time to call it a day. No, no bites the last couple of drifts, but got three swords, so great day. Unfortunately, the bigger one got away, but uh, got a few mahis to go with that too, so beautiful day out here. A lot of fun. We're gonna head back to Bud and Mary's now, clean up some fish, and uh, probably cook a little bit for dinner here the next couple of nights. So we'll see you guys back at the dock. We have made it back to Bud and Mary's. Time to clean some fish. Pleasure meeting you and thanks for watching all the videos and all that stuff. So, you guys like fishing too, right? I love fishing. I live here, no. Okay. I, I might be in about two years ago. So okay, awesome. Perfect. So, a couple of swords, not big ones for keepers. We lost one good one. So, why? But now it sounds like September, October. So. That's me. Perfect. Back of the dock, fish are unloaded. A few mahis, a couple of swords, tagged one. Big one got away, unfortunately, but a couple of keeper sized fish. And, Last one was hooked in the dorsal fin, so he kind of drowned, but uh, we're going to eat them and everyone's going to be happy. They're going to grill some up and Miles and all his buddies, and we're going to take a little bit home too, so let's get to playing. This fish was just, you know, right about 50 inches. Not a big one, but a keeper. We don't grow them, we just try to catch them. But we always want to try to get one for dinner. You know, I'd rather us catch it than send these guys to go get fish from a commercial boat, you know. And, not big ones here, but big enough, and it'll be fresh and good. Ice down, and the second fish there, you know, is another small legal fish, but he was hooked in the dorsal fin, so he drowned. So no point to let that fish go and feed into the crabs, the sharks. So that's why we kept that second one. We had the right one on, you know, we had a, a first one that came off there, we hooked that double header. We could see him thinning out there. He could swim a nice spread on his dorsal and his tail. He's probably 150 plus, maybe, maybe 200, but a heartbreaker got away, unfortunately. But this is going to be I mean, beautiful meat. I mean, check that out there. Fresh steaks there. Absolutely beautiful. Prime sirloin there. A little bit of belly slime here, so we'll scrape this off. Some people cut this off. I usually cook it with this inner liner on there. Beautiful swordfish meat right there. Don't get no fresher. You know, we iced them down, we bled them out, and it's going to be yummy, no doubt about it. Swordfish is pretty soft meat, so they actually cut pretty easy. We love it. And it's been a while since This is actually Sadie's favorite fish to eat. She loves eating swordfish. So you gotta watch the mercury content. So you don't wanna eat it every day, but I'll probably eat it once a week and you'll be fine. We'll see what he's eating, you guys, then we know. So a few little fish, so no squid right now, but some little fish in there like that. You see those things, so that's what they're down there eating. The captain's cut for dinner. You gotta take some home to the girls and feed them. They'll be happy. Through the eye of the sword. You give it, you put it in your mouth and give it to him. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's stuck in the teeth. Oh. 
<laughs> so I would say, did you guys fish yesterday? Did you guys get the blue marlin? Oh, you did? Congratulations. They got a blue marlin with Tam and with Matt yesterday. Matt was my old mate. Hopefully they didn't, hopefully they didn't talk too bad about me. But, uh, <laughs> but I got a blue marlin. I said, congratulations. So I think I've, I've been here my whole life. I think I've only ever caught three or four here my entire life. So very few and far between. I've lost, you know, probably another six or seven, but congratulations. Who got it? Who was the angler? We all shared. Share okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Almost done. The last piece of mahi. Cut the skin off, take the bone out, feed the tarpon. He's like a little kid over here feeding all the fish, you know. Feeding the tarpon never gets boring. It's always exciting watching them bite and eat and stuff like that. So, yep, smack and hold it there and they'll come right up to you. There you go. Oh, he's thinking about it. I was feeding these big giant lemon sharks in there and I didn't see this thing come back around. I think it was seven foot long and oh, ate this. My hand was out of the water, but smart, but I mean, it could have jumped out and got my hand. I didn't see it coming when it came around a freaking 300 pounder a couple months ago. Yeah. Congratulations Good on the first swords there. Me. Good seeing y'all. Yeah. Good seeing ya. Great to see you, Tim. Good job on the mahis yeah. there. And so pleasure fishing with you. Well, that wraps it up. They're going home. They got plenty of fish for dinner, a few meals. Kept a little bit for us too. Very nice of them. And we'll be back home cooking it up soon, so. See you guys back at the house. If you guys want these shirts, one of our cotton shirts right there, head to the website, stansfishing.com. Got our cotton shirts on there, our hats, our performance shirts. Go check them out there. This one's for Kevin Heron. Really cool piece of artwork right here. We're gonna show you guys that in a minute. Check this shot out. I'm here with Kevin Dodge, one of my friends, a great underwater photographer. Awesome swordfish picture here. These are available now. It's a perfect size print for the house, for the office. And this swordfish picture is on the wrap of my boat. So it's my favorite shot. And Kevin's gonna tell you a little bit about it and how you guys can get one. Okay guys, this is a, a 30 by 20 inch aluminum piece. Turn it over, everything comes with it. The bracket right away, the screws, even a leveler. Put it on. Um, look, I, I'm the fool that gets in the water on these things because they're very dangerous, but Nick's the one that actually gets me there. So it's a, a group effort. I've signed it and Nick signed the piece. We're doing a run of 100 of these and this is the first one going to Nick, so there's 99 left. It's a really nice piece for a really good price. Click the link below if you guys want to get one. And uh, I think it look good in the house or in the office. Like that's that. cool, right? The like aluminum frame and all that stuff, and it looks like so sharp. So, first like one's going. They saw it, they said they want it. It's my personal one, but I get number two. So, <laughs> where's, it, where's it going back to? Or you know what? Titusville. Triple after. They got the blue marlin on Tan Man yesterday. First marlin ever, right? Yeah, Bud and Mary. Bud and Mary. You know where to go. There you go. Matt's my old mate. They had fun with them, and. Congratulations. And they just got the first print here from Kevin. And awesome. We're at Charles' house here, jumping in the pool. Got a nice slab of swordfish there. We're going to do something a little bit different. I don't really ever cook with avocado oil, but I want to try it. So, got some avocado oil right there. Got some salt and pepper, the usual. This fresh swordfish, especially gets. Then we're going to hit it with a little bit of key lime juice when we're done here, you know, right at the end, right when we're cooking it. And that's, you can't beat that. Like I said, these were not big swordfish, but uh, they were keepers, they were legal. And we kept the first one. I always like to keep one to eat. The second fish was hooked in the door, and he drowned. So instead of letting him go, and he was not swimming all, at all in the leader, so I had to keep him, those guys that eat him. But we're gonna cut these not too thin. You know, you want about an inch wide, because if you go too thin, you know, you overcook it. Overcooked swordfish is no good. So cutting right through here like that. Let's see, we'll get two more out of here, and we'll get these going here. We're gonna do some sides and stuff like that. This will be nice. Go to the fun day with Niles. I fished Niles and his family and friends there for, I think, eight years now. And, uh, well, there's a brand new bottle here at Charles' house. A little avocado oil on these guys. We're gonna rub all this in here. It's a beautiful day here in Almorada. Gorgeous weather. Get all these things lathered up here. Now I was hoping to feed Sadie because Sadie loves swordfish. It's one of her favorite sheep, but she went with Madison and James and Michelle for a couple of days with Claire. So Madison used to help take care of the kids there last summer, you know, and great help. And so you know what, we're coming to the Keys, let's hang out with the kids for a few days. So they took the kids from us, they're gone for a couple days, but we're gonna enjoy this here ourselves. So a little salt and pepper right here, get these going. Then we'll season the other side once it's on the grill. And then we'll hit them just with the, uh... ooh, this is gonna be hot here. Listen to the sizzle. And then we will hit them on the other side here once we get these other things going as well. So, first time cooking on this flat top, but Charles did some, uh, Chicken on the other night and it was delicious. So the dogs are jumping in the pool, they're going crazy, and we'll get this going and 
The key is not to overcook it, so we'll see you guys in about two minutes when we flip them over here. Probably four or five minutes at most. So you can see the meat there, you can see the coloration is getting cooked there. So we're gonna flip this one right here. Now I've never cooked on this, so might need a little more oil, but ooh, look at that, that looks good there. This one's a little bit thicker. Let's do one of these other thin ones right here. Oh, look at that, this is gonna be good, you guys. And we're gonna hit this with a little bit of key lime. We're gonna hit this with a little Key West key lime juice right here, so. What is it, lime juice, Key West lime juice. Get a little Key West lime juice right here. And this will be really good, you guys. I love lime on, on fish. Time to get it off, you guys. Ooh, it's gonna be good. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, that looks good. Let's see, this is the next spin piece here. Bring my dog back. Let's see, now one trick about swordfish is see if it's done or not, you can grab the skin. If the skin peels off, you know it's done. Not peeling off yet, so let's give these like maybe another 30 seconds, then we'll peel them off. Frank, the tank's going down. I know Look, you guys have been missing him. He's not a bad guy, he's just on vacation. I'm, all, I'm only here for the free food. <laughs> yeah! Hey, Charles, you got some free Oh, yeah. That thing was swimming, what, four hours ago? Pretty much, you guys. Caught him earlier today. It is hot. Burn my finger, but super white meat there. Look at some avocado oil, salt and pepper, some, some lime juice on it. It's hot. I'm letting it cool down for a second. What'd you think? Good or too hot? <laughs> Juicy? If I ate good stuff like this, I wouldn't be as fat as I am. <laughs> Don't get no fresh on that. Juicy. You don't want to dry that swordfish. Sort of very moist there. Very juicy and very good. Let's get these other ones off now, too. They're definitely done. Let's get some more opinions there. You know, Frank will eat anything. He said it was good. I said it was good, too. Let's go get Mr. Charles' opinion. Charles! Come try this hot swordfish. Now, we could get the dog's opinion, but... Don't eat anything. anything. No, we don't need that. Now, this is a little hot. This piece is probably cool off here. This piece? Yeah, that's probably the better piece to take a piece out of. Now, let us know what you think here. Tell the viewers how it tastes, you know, if it's good. It tastes like it was caught yesterday. <laughs> it's caught today. <laughs> how it's dare good. he? It's good. good. It's very good. Very good there. And plain and simple. You got salt, yeah, pepper, and oil simple. there. We got two more victims over here. Let's get um, it is a little hot, so be careful. You eating the whole thing? You just... Nah, you can grab a piece and try it off. We just want to get a little taste test here, and then we'll get back to our evening. So, Sarah. And that was a little bit thinner piece. You know, it might be cooked a tad more, but I think it's still going to be juicy and good. We need to get good. back to our evening. This is our evening. It ain't right now, it's good. Not bad? Yeah. Well done, Nick. Never? Had, uh, Never? Okay, peel it off the yeah, skin there. Peel off the now, I've seen some people eat the skin, I don't eat it. I watched my aunt eat, and my aunt eat it one time, she was chewing it up. But yeah. What'd you think? Good. Decent? You ever had swordfish before? No. First time ever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't That's get it. much fresh. We caught this thing this like This is the first one ago. that he's ever caught. All right, you want, yeah. Cooper, you want Cooper's opinion? All right, let's get Cooper's opinion. He's going to feed the dog there, and this will really tell you. More seasoning, but what do you do with that fish? Yeah. All right, Cooper approves. Boone, huh? you want to yeah. try it? <laughs> I didn't have to tell you. You're such a beggar. <laughs> yeah, it's steak. Oh, it's all gone. Charles is eating it. I mean, I don't know he'll eat anything, but have you had swordfish before? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> We're going to Dakota's opinion to see. All right, so we, it's decent. we are looking for a flat top sponsorship. I mean, not the best. <laughs> if anybody's got a flat top out there and okay. wants to pay some money, yeah, we'll take it. We'll use it. We'll let you know if it works or not. That was quick. What'd you put on it? Avocado oil, salt and pepper, some lime juice. And he's trying to sell the viewers like he caught it today. Like he Five fished. Five hours ago. Like he fished. Yeah. That and would it was mean a rare occurrence that went fishing. <laughs> Very rare. Dude, I don't even remember how to drive a boat it's been so long. <laughs> I was like, which way is land? Thank God for a GPS. Cooper. All right, well, that wraps up. You want more Dakota, or is that it? You ready for tacos? You They're waiting on tacos, coming on the tacos truck. I guess it's just me and Charles eating the rest of it, and maybe Cooper. <laughs> Dude, Cooper so, loves it. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that video. Hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. If you want any merch, go to the website, stansfishing.com. And uh, well, thanks your, for watching. What's, what's, thanks your for email? what's your email? We're looking <laughs> for a flat Papa top. Joe's restaurant will be open soon if Charles gets it built. So come on down here and go <laughs> fishing. Go across the street there and you can eat dinner and have a few call ones. So you we'll fish up Honey Mary's and bring your fish to uh, Papa Joe's. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>